Welcome back everybody, and you know what's really just incredible to me? The fact that somehow we got here, not from evolving from here, but evolving from here, blows my mind. How's it going everybody? And yes, welcome back. Clint here with Classic Firearms and hopefully you guys found that, you know, intro to be as about entertaining as I did uh, when talking about the M14 and how it grew up or grew down to become this guy, which ultimately became kind of like this guy. I don't know. It's all kind of funny, right? Uh, anyway, military firearms. They're a good time. They're, they're classic firearms. <laughs> okay, I'm done. Anyway, so what we're here to talk about today are a couple of Colts. And we've got a newer production, Colt M4. You guys have seen this in plenty of videos now. It's my personal that I just keep playing with. And I don't know, it's a good time, right? And then we recently got something in that I thought was just super cool. The XM16 E1 clone by Colt. I guess I can't really call it a clone because it is by Colt. But at the same time, it's not an original XM16 E1. And what is this gun because on first look everybody says oh it's an m16a1 well you're wrong that's not at all what this is this is the xm16 e1 and pretty much what this is is the cross between the original m16 and the m16a1 after this got the formal adoption by the united states military in the late 60s 1967 i think it was and really what you're looking at is yes ultimately an m16a1 except you don't have the three-prong uh, flash hider here. What they found whenever this was being field tested was uh, <laughs> walking through a jungle, you're getting this thing caught up in all sorts of stuff and it could be grabbing it and moving your muzzle. Now you're sitting here screwing with it and it turns out to be an enemy combatant hiding out in the trees. Yes, cue fortunate son, the trees are talking and I feel like I'm being watched. Just kidding. Anyway, uh, really cool gun though. So the M16A1, uh, from the M16, they, adapt, they adopted the forward assist. The brass deflector actually didn't come until the A2, and they got rid of this guy here and put on what we know as the A1 flash hider, which it differs from the A2 flash hider in that the A2 flash hider actually has a closed bottom. More of a compensator at this point, simply because that flash is expelling all at the top instead of all around, which flash hiders do, but a compensator is redirecting that gas upwards and therefore kind of mitigating recoil by pushing the barrel down some. Okay, little differences like that. Now you'll also notice with the E1, much like with the A1, uh, you do have this triangle handguard. You've got your front sight post that everybody knows and recognizes. You've got the integrated carry handle into the upper receiver. Now the location of the charging handle was actually something newer. The original AR-15 by Armalite, uh, yes, Armalite AR-15, not assault rifle. Make that very clear to everybody out there, Armalite. 15, all right, AR-15. Anyway, the original Armalite AR-15, which came before the M16, actually had the charging handle located right in here, which is pretty interesting. So it actually had this little, what looked like a trigger sitting right here, and the entire idea was to think that you would just cock it like that. Well, due to later models, they kind of changed up the entire charging assembly and decided to go with a charging handle that we all know here. All right, but like I said, the only other difference on the upper receiver between the uh, the M16 and the A1 is what we see here with the forward assist and of course the obvious notches within the bolt carrier group and the bolt carrier group on this guy is chrome -plated, chrome plated pretty nice but anyway uh, the forward assist you're also going to notice is a little bit different compared to uh, the models of late so for instance you've got what's called like that teardrop style which I actually like quite a bit. It's, it's easier to actuate without having to really move your whole hand. If your bolt does get caught up, doesn't seat appropriately or whatever, you can just do that number. Granted, what we've been taught uh, is to just do that to make sure it actually jams into place because if there is something there blocking it or for whatever reason it didn't seat, you're gonna need probably a little bit more pressure than just that. Slam that thing and hopefully it goes bang, right? And in comparison to like the newer M16s, M4s, things like that. We've got just a simple circle. Why did they change it? Not so much materials, probably cost saving, and one less thing to get snagged. That's really the only thing I can think of. 
But uh, anyway, also too, there's your brass deflector and compared to the upper receiver that doesn't have one. All right. Now your M16A2 also later on is one that we typically saw like in uh, who knows the Black Hawk Down movie, of course. You've got an improved handguard. Instead of having the quad rail, which later came, uh, Knight's Armament, thank you for that. They created the RIS, the rail interface system, and the RAS system, which is really great. Uh, but Daniel Defense, in my mind, and I've mentioned this in a couple of recent videos, I think they perfected the rail interface system which is what we have here on the M4 clone. And uh, this guy here is the front sight post cutout. So you, you can actually, there's several different models of the M4A1. You've got them in different lengths, of course, like for the Mark 18, a little bit shorter. Um, I think the Mark 12 has a longer one, something along those lines. But anyway, the M4A1, you can get it with the front sight post cutout or without it in case you don't have a front sight post running, you know, low profile, right? High speed operators out there. Anyway, the M16A2 had more of a radial type of handguard on it and not much difference other than the integration of the brass deflector. Also too, later that was adopted was a actual trapdoor buttstock. Not something that's typically seen um, on much more modern firearms because everybody's got adjustable stocks, things like that. But for instance, the gun I'm still issued, the M16A4, definitely has the trap door back here and uh, a lot of times they say oh, yeah that's where your cleaning kit goes stuff like that the cleaning kits were issued now though are these nice little um, circular things with molly on them there's no way in heck they're gonna fit there a lot of guys will take their three-point sling that they're some still issued now we've moved to different uh, slings like the uh, Vickers blue force gear which is a great one uh, and they'll you know just latch it on over here but that's just a hunk of stuff I don't really want by my face when I'm shooting it just gets in the way typically it goes on a bag or something like that and uh, anyway good stuff though so Mostly the trap doors are now used for uh, crayons, all right? Anyway, continuing on, the 20-round uh, mag is something that eventually got replaced as well. As we know, we went to a standard 30-round magazine because capacity is everything, especially when it comes to uh, a combat zone or just having a, I don't know, standard capacity magazine. Then again, any magazine in my mind, whether it be 100 rounds or whatever, standard capacity, so America. Anyway. <laughs> Second Amendment, more like it. But uh, anyway, really neat thing that they've come out with that Colt has. Even the roll marking on it is super cool. It says Colt AR-15, property of U.S. government, XM-16E1. XM also standing for experimental model. All right, and uh, there you go. Maybe that'll show up. It's, it's a little bit light, and I think they wanted to keep everything true to its period, which is really cool. Even the Colt coating of that light gray color. Just overall a super neat gun. And uh, we're gonna hold on to this one for a while for, uh, I don't know, different giveaways. Well, maybe not giveaway. I, I really like this gun and like how it shoots. But uh, different uh, videos, like uh, maybe a uh, Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. You know, it's not like we've got FALs or M14s or XM16s laying around or MP5s or anything to talk about. So let me know down in the comments section if you'd like to see that. I just need to get my hands on an M60. So if any of you guys got one of those, just drop me a DM, magdump underscore Morgan. I'll swipe card, okay? <laughs> if my wife's watching, I'm just kidding. Anyway, uh, continuing on here, what else is really different from this guy other than this guy than some obvious things is with the a4 variation, we got away from pretty much the charging handle. We went to a detachable style charging handle and a flat top rail is what it's called, or an A4 upper, which is just that Picatinny rail up here. Once we started going to the magnified optic, the RCO, the rifle combat optic, or just otherwise known as the ACOG from Trigicon, we really didn't have any need for the carry handle. In fact, um, I can't tell you where our carry handles are that we were issued. They're somewhere in the armory. I guess, maybe, or sold on Craigslist or something. Anyway, overall, the improvements that have been made over time from the M16, or you know, since the original M16 are pretty cool. Even just actually the original AR-15 by Armalite and seeing all the different changes throughout history has been really cool. Again, paying homage to the <laughs> to the start of the Vietnam War with the M14 here. This is a Fulton Armory M14. Speaking of my wife, this is uh, her gun, believe it or not. So I'm making sure I'm taking extra good care of it. But uh, it's really neat to see, you know, we went from pretty much learning 
and all the different experiences we've had on the battlefield and in combat from something like this with that full rifle or full, full power cartridge of 7.62 NATO uh, down to the 5.56 M855 cartridge um, that we're still being issued today. Of course, a lot of guys that are actually in theater playing in the sandbox right now are issued what's called M855A1, which is actually a still tipped, not just a still core, but a still kit, still tipped projectile that is, uh, it's a spicy little guy, check it out. But uh, anyway, Really neat stuff, guys. The M4, M16 platform is one that I plan, that I think is gonna be around still for a long time. You know, SIG is introducing a couple of different combat firearms, even changing out the whole caliber. I think we're going to like a 6.8 or something along those lines. Uh, pretty interesting stuff, and I'd like to hear from you guys down in the comment section your thoughts and opinions on that. Again, I just think it's really neat to see military firearms and military weaponry throughout history and not transition and stuff, you know? I mean, you know, bows and arrows to now this stuff. It's pretty cool, the belt feds, right? So talk about a good time, but it's really neat to see the XM16 E1 that Colt came out with. Uh, the, the the clone here, the replica, even though it's still Colt, so how replica is it? And to see now the newer 2020 model M4 here, which is cool. For a while, Colt stopped producing uh, ARs for the civilian market. They needed to focus, or at least they told us, they were focusing on their military law enforcement contracts, but I don't know how many military contracts they actually had. I know we still have a couple of Colt M4s, but I, those are from way back, so. I don't know, but now they've been bought out by CZ. They've been making headlines because of it, and maybe CZ will save the company. Maybe, I don't know. I really like CZ and the things that they do. So again, something I would like to hear from you guys about down in the comment section. If you got any insider news, drop us, you know, drop us a link down there or something, you know what I mean? But anyway, with all that being said, what do you guys think about the improvements that we've made over time? Do you think maybe we should have stuck with the one in 12 t twist, real slow twist rate on the 20 inch pencil barrel that this guy originally was planned for versus like, what is this, a one in seven? The one in seven on this guy here, which is pretty much the standard for most of the M4s, things like that. I don't know, the faster twist rate seems to be working out at 500 yards, so. Yeah, what are, what are you gonna do? But anyway, again, I'll hear you about you guys down in the comments section. And right now, we're offering a pretty sweet giveaway, and that's typically the case. So never miss out on our giveaways. Simply go to classicfirearms.com, click on the top banner, and that top banner is usually a goofy photo of myself. Well, it's a good photo, but I'm goofy and included in the photo, so there's that, sorry. But uh, it's also a good photo of the firearm that we're giving away, and it could be maybe this Knight's SR-15 or maybe this scar that you see here at the VCOG with Braden Price. Is that coming? I don't know, maybe. Is it here? Maybe. And also maybe this FAL one day. I don't know, the, uh, I'm keeping that, so. Yeah, I'm keeping that. But anyway, I'll see you guys down in the comments section. We'll catch you guys next time at Classic Firearms, and as always, God bless you guys. We appreciate you.